Okay, uh, we've progressed our sculpture uh, quite a ways, our little figure study, and now we're getting to the point where most of our forms are in place, right? And uh, I've already been through a little bit of the refining process on this guy, and I just want to show you guys uh, now where we're going to, uh, kind of the approach that I take and, and the tools that I use to kind of unify the surface and get it to feel a little bit softer and uh, less sketchy okay and uh, you guys can approach this however you want but I'm just going to show you my techniques um, so first make sure you have it on a layer because all of this is uh, is good to capture and then it's also good to uh, be able to turn the layer on and off and see uh, where you've come from and what you've modified um, and I'll just capture this actually onto a morph target uh, just because it switches a little more quickly so delete and store morph target turn refine back on and you can see that uh, this this layer that we're looking at now is kind of the result of my refinement process thus far and uh, really when we're talking about refining we're talking about getting in and getting past the the first sketch that we put down for all these shapes and uh, even past you know the second stage of refinement where we tried to get it to to really sit in the right place and and make a unified plan uh, this last refine you can see my layer is actually refined three um, is where we are literally in tight to the muscles and trying to see every kind of new form uh, every kind of form that's coming uh, as a result of of tension or landmark or uh, fat and we're really studying the reference so everything that we do when we're refining should be driven by uh, reference and if the reference isn't good enough for it then you just really have to use your best intuition to uh, put you in the right place okay so let me just show you uh, flip on and off what I'm talking about so this is what it looks like now after uh, a little ways into my third refining process and this is uh, where it came from right so everything in here is was is you know plausibly correct uh, anatomically but it's not exactly right um, and I'm not just talking about copying the reference yes our goal is to make it look like the reference but uh, the reference is a photograph of a real human right so uh, when we're looking at that and we're trying to to study it what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand what drives the shapes that we're seeing in the images right for example in this area um, yeah it's sketchy and we have all the anatomy going in the right direction we have rear deltoid coming in we have trapezius going across we have triceps coming in we've got the uh, trapezius sorry the rear deltoid teres major triceps trapezius up here infraspinatus we have it all but it's not really bunching up uh, correctly right the arm is really retracted and so what we what actually happens and we can deduce this from looking closely at the reference is the rear head of the deltoid goes really short right its insertion is pulled almost as far as it can be back towards the origin so the muscle body is going to get really short and round likewise for the trapezius or the the teres major and uh, the triceps as well right and if I flip the mod modifications on you can see how unified this all becomes uh, with a little bit of close study uh, of the reference and really consideration of what's happening anatomically right so one there's a little change in gesture which I also noticed um, on closer study uh, these are all the kind of things that go on in your refinement pass you look and say ah actually that contour is not quite right uh, I need to tweak the pose just a little bit and in my case it was just a little bit more compression on this side and a little bit more extension on this side and also retraction of this arm back a little bit right just uh, ever so slightly maybe a few degrees um, but that sets up this nice uh, tension in this area okay likewise you know small things like uh, well big things like the refinement to the gluteal area you really have to sometimes you have to go in and study the man ass to 
to to really uh, resolve the forms, and that's what you do. You just have to to really look and see what's happening. And what I had was very approximate, and it didn't really put the tension in this right gluteal hip uh, region that uh, that the pose deserves. Right. So as I turn it back on, you can see it pop in, and it compresses, and it it gets a little bit uh, fuller, and you get this big kind of tendinous region just uh, posterior to the greater trochanter popping out. Uh, spinal erectors are refined. Again, they were in approximately the right place, but uh, they both changed in in volume and, and modeling, but also the, the level of this lateral mass of spinal erectors had to shift up, right? Um, and I can't tell you, I can, I can easily go through all the things that I saw in refining mine, but these aren't going to translate to what you have to do on your own. Uh, I can only kind of tell you that the, the general principle is to really uh, get deep into the study of what, uh, what the forms are looking like in the, in the live figure and try to translate those into the puzzle that you've already assembled right here. Right, so you should have already a lot of framework to to fit these modifications into. Right, so it's just a case of uh, really pushing them a little bit further. Okay, so all that being said, let me just uh, show you kind of the the tools that I'm using, and they're more or less the same tools that we have been using, but when it comes down to really getting your surface tight, uh, you can do it a couple of ways, like. Uh, you can obviously use the smooth brush, which is what probably people will do straight out of uh, just straight out of the box. And if I turn my smooth up high, you'll see that yeah, I can get rid of these. Uh, I can get rid of these wrinkles pretty nicely. Um, but I'm not. I'm not honestly a big fan of smoothing too much. Um, at least not smoothing by default, because uh, we actually get a little bit of subtle form from our from our uh, stroke marks that I like to keep um, and so I try not to to smooth too much to to make my my form soft uh, rather I like to refine in the same way that I've built up um, with a, the clay tubes brush and uh, an alpha uh, square alpha but actually to take the edge off of the alpha um, I'll often turn the blur up to 15 so it goes really soft and then the magic is to set the intensity pretty low but get your brush embed really low as well I'll just move it over here so we can see brush embed to 2 is what I have right now so really this is doing a very subtle uh, carving off of the top of these forms uh, and also a subtle fill right and it might be a little bit more time consuming than uh, the smooth brush, but the idea is, at least uh, for me, is that when I'm down here refining uh, the forms, trying to smooth them off, if I just smooth this off, uh, it's quite a passive um, uh, stroke, right? And it just goes soft. If I'm actually building form as I go, I'm actually looking hard at my reference to see how uh, these planes transition. And I'm creating almost a, a small sculpture in this area, you know, like I'm taking the brush marks out, yes, but I'm also really paying attention to uh, the final uh, setup of these planes. Okay, so uh, this is refinement at kind of its finest level. And if we're really getting in tight, you know, we're setting these up with the, the clay tubes and we're kind of smoothing and, and unifying surfaces, then we can go in with a really tight standard brush and really just set up any kind of really concave tr uh, transitions. Okay. And then clay tubes again, you know, just kind of go to refine and and backfill this a little bit. Yeah, 
and a little bit of smooth sometimes and this actually gets pretty sharp as well in here this uh, costal arch so we go in and we just kind of actively uh, refine this down okay and so that's the broad uh, idea is that you're you're making decisions uh, based on uh, what you're observing on the mesh right so as I kind of sculpt this up uh, it smooths out a little bit and and the other thing that I do a lot at this stage is I really uh, start to as things get smoother and you get fewer kind of hash marks um, it becomes a little bit easier to assess the big big volumes of the of the figure uh, relative to what the reference is doing right so uh, things like this mass of the pectoral muscle coming in here versus up here like if I see that actually yeah there's a little bit more volume coming across in this mid section of the pectoralis major off the sternum um, what I'll do is I'll go in with a big big standard brush with low intensity like something like three or four and I'll just stroke the volume in very subtly and make a very kind of broad scale uh, correction to to the volume without kind of getting into any of the uh, the micro details right and the reason that we can see it a little better when the the stroke marks are are minimized is because we get the the roundness of the surface and the highlight uh, a little more apparent okay and things that I've noticed that I've already adjusted the volume of it things like the uh, the rectus abdominis which are really really thick in fact um, on this guy and they really are prominent if you look at some of the the side views like this um, they're a thick thick sheet of muscle um, so that is primarily the goal of the refine stage okay other things that we're gonna have to put in are the fine details the things that have a lot of high frequency uh, information things like the navel right you want to get in there and put as much fidelity as you can into things like this uh, unfortunately the mesh is a little bit low resolution right here um, you almost want to do a local subdivide to uh, increase this I'm gonna hold off on that um, but these are the areas that uh, need to have the modeled interest um, when the rest of the body is unified with a nice smooth uh, effect right so as soon as we get rid of all our our as soon as I get rid of all my stroke marks the skin goes very soft and the eye naturally darts around looking for those areas uh, where there's really really fine details and it wants to see those to be convinced that it's natural right and it's things like that it's things like the wrinkles which are not in uh, down the side here it's things like these small skin folds uh, these fairly sharp inflections uh, along the ridge muscles um, folds and small planes that's what the eye kind of picks out when when the surface goes nice and smooth okay uh, and so I'm gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna let you guys uh, refine your surfaces yourself um, this last refinement pass is really uh, an exercise in in vision and really seeing into the model in detail um, and then obviously uh, executing it uh, technically on the surface but it really is an exercise in vision okay uh, I will uh, leave this here and I'll let you guys get back to it thanks